<laughs> In the previous example, we looked at applying a force to a cabled wheel and watching it spin. So now what happens when I remove that force? Uh, realistically, in most real-world applications, without that force, it's going to stop eventually. Whether it's due to air resistance, whether it's due to a frictional interaction between the bearings uh, sure. uh, on the yeah. actual yeah. cabled wheel itself, but it will eventually come to a stop. So let's look at examining that case. Okay. So I guess what you're saying is that we can still use that same relationship, uh, but in this case, now that it's slowing down, there's going to be some deceleration, some new mm -hmm. value, and it's because there's a different torque. That, yeah, that friction some other torque. force that's acting right. to slow it down now that right. we've removed this one. But the important thing to remember is that this moment of inertia is a moment of inertia of this wheel. So it stays the same regardless. And that was 10 kilogram meter squared or? Kilogram meter squared or newton meter second squared per radian. <laughs> there we go. All right. Okay. So, um, so in this case, let's say that when we remove that force, it still spins for a bit. So we'll say a thousand revolutions. Why not, let's say 800. Okay, 800. 800, just because 800 revolutions, when we multiply it by 2 pi to get it into radians, that works out to be about 5,000. And that's a nice number. Nice, that is a better number. All okay, right. let's do that. 5,000 rads. Okay, and then we also look at the idea that our initial rotational speed is what we ended with last time. Okay, so that was 10 rads per second. Right, and this is eventually going to slow down and stop. So after that, 800 revolutions will eventually get to zero radians per second. Okay. We don't know how much time that takes. No. We've got a new torque. Let me put a little prime here, and we're going to calculate that. Okay. And we've got this new alpha, which we also don't know. But we have enough kinematic information that we can calculate what alpha is. Perfect. So, so let's do this. Omega final squared is equal to omega initial squared plus... 2 times the acceleration times the displacement, delta Now, theta. this might look familiar. We did uh, linear kinematics equations that had very similar format. Okay, so plugging the numbers in, we've got 2 times alpha, which is the unknown, times 5,000. And just to solve for alpha, we're going to bring the 10 squared to one side. It becomes a negative 10 squared. Which is good because we do know that it slows down. It's decelerating, so our acceleration value is negative. All right. 100 divided by 10,000, that's a small angular acceleration of 0 0.01 rads per second squared. Great. So we now have this new value of the rotational acceleration. Yep. We have our value from before of the moment of inertia. We can solve for what this new torque value is. Okay. Uh, torque, the new one is 10 kilogram meters squared was our moment of inertia times 0 0.01 rads per second squared, and we're going to get a torque that is, what, 0 0.1? Kilogram meter squared radians per second squared, or newton meters. There we go. Okay. If you need to find out what the actual force was that was slowing this whole thing down, um, you would have that this torque is equal to the force times the radius, and again, you get this value of 0 0.1 Right. Newtons. Assuming that that force of friction was acting on the end, like if you put your hand on the wheel to slow it down. But sometimes some of the rotational torques, there's no easy way to define a mm -hmm. distance, right? So you're right that in that case, it's perhaps better just to discuss the torque itself because we don't necessarily know where those forces are being applied. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Science. <laughs>